Bible says we ought to lift up holy hands and just celebrate the goodness of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you for a chance to get together and worship. Uh, Father, I just, you just can never get tired of singing about the goodness of God. You are just so faithful. And today we celebrate that. We thank you for your goodness and mercy toward us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, I'm going to look at the book of Lamentations this morning. If you want to remain standing for the reading of God's word, uh, certainly you can do so. Lamentations chapter 3. And the Bible says, I recall this to my mind, therefore I wait. The Lord's acts of mercy indeed do not end, for his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Read this with me. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I wait for him. The Lord is good to those who await him, to the person who seeks him, It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. I don't know if you've heard this one, but the Bible says the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk this morning about the faithfulness of the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Toward us. The book of Lamentations is a book of psalms of mourning written by the prophet Jeremiah, who has been named the weeping prophet because he openly wept over the sin of the children of Israel. In Jeremiah chapter 9, the prophet said, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for those. Slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a traveler's lodging place, so that I might leave my people and go away from them, for all of them, all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous people. In chapter 8, Jeremiah lamented, Harvest is past, summer is over, and we are still not yet saved. I am broken. Over the brokenness of the daughter of my people, I mourn. Dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has not the health of the daughter of my people been restored? Jeremiah has preached for over 50 years without one single convert. Nobody has turned around Nobody has trusted in the Lord. Nobody has followed God. And Jeremiah has wept over them. He mourned over them. He cried over them. Have you ever been so moved by the love that you have to see sinners saved that you mourned over them? Have you ever been so moved by your love for lost family members or children that have walked away and chosen their own path and siblings that just refused to believe, that you were so moved in your spirit that you wept over them, you grieved over them. Jeremiah was consumed by the grief that the Lord had to have a talking to him. Let me show you in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 16 through 20. God said, as for you, talking to Jeremiah, as for you, do not pray for this people and do not lift up a cry of prayer over them and do not plead with me. For I am not listening to you. Do you not see what they are doing? In the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead the dough to make sacrificial cakes for the queen of heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods in order to provoke me to anger. Are they provoking me, declares the Lord, Is it not themselves instead to their own shame? Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Behold, my anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on human and animal life, and on the trees of the field and the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and not be quenched. Well, that's a message that I never want to hear. It's like God is saying they don't want to be saved. They don't want to be delivered. And Jeremiah almost gave up preaching right then. He almost stopped because of the stubbornness and the hard-heartedness 
of the people that he loved so much, and he prayed that God would not hear him anymore, and Jeremiah went home. He turned his back on his responsibility. He left the pulpit. But friends, that would not last for very long. He just couldn't do it. He could not leave his people behind. He could not stop himself from crying out to God on behalf of the people he loved the most. He could not put down that burden to see people turn towards God. And Jeremiah remembered what God did all those years ago. He remembered that it was God who called him. And I remember taking my first class toward my path to ordination a long time ago. And one of the professors looked at me and said, listen, there are going to be times when you go through things in ministry that the only thing that keeps you behind the pulpit is to remember that it was God that called you and that he is faithful. No matter how people may or may not treat you, no matter how the world turns, remember God called you and that will keep you through some of your most difficult times. Jeremiah recalled this and he remembered the words that the Lord gave him The Lord told him, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you, Jeremiah, as a prophet to the nations. Then I said, oh Lord God, behold, I do not even know how to speak because I am young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am young. Because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command you, that you will speak. And do not be afraid of them, the Lord said, for I am with you to save you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, and he touched my mouth, Jeremiah said. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed to you this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Later on, Jeremiah would say the message of God was something he just could not contain. Jeremiah said, the message the Lord gave me, I can't stop myself from shouting. I cannot help from speaking the truth about the Lord. He says, God's word was in my heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Have you ever felt that way before? The Lord's been so good to you that you just cannot keep quiet. You've got to tell somebody about the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord. And there ought to be a witness here this morning that would say, I remember a time when I tried to get away from the Lord. I remember a time when I tried to walk away from the Lord. I wanted to do everything my own way. I tried it for a while, but I am here this morning because I found that you just can now outrun the steadfast love of God. Because his love never ceases For his compassions, his mercies, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness toward us. Jeremiah reminds us that God is faithful with his grace even when we are not faithful to him. Even though we don't deserve it, God is gracious toward us. He is slow to get angry. I'm thankful for that today. But he is also quick to give mercy. Even when I have been unfaithful, God has always been and will always be faithful. God gives you and I something that we like to call an amazing grace. When you were lost and without hope, he came and found us. For it is by grace we have been saved. Through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that you and I will never be able to boast. This same grace that saves us is the same grace that sustains us. An acronym for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. God who was rich in grace and mercy while we were yet sinners. The Bible says Christ died for us. God is faithful with his grace And then Jeremiah reminds us that God is faithful with his gifts. The Bible says his compassions, they fail not. His gifts are always gracious. God gives us and gifts us with his presence. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, the Bible says, Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with whatever you have. For Jesus himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever abandon you. 
In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, And behold, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. That tells us, church, that even when we cannot see him, he sees us. Somebody gave me this for free a long time ago. I'm going to offer it to you free of charge this morning. When you can't trace God, learn to trust God. When you can't trace God, learn to trust God. When you can't always see what God is doing, know that God loves you so much that he will never allow you to leave his sight. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. When you need him the most, he is your best ally. God fights for you and I. I wish I can go back in time. I got to table this till I get to heaven. I wish I could ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was, who was it with you in that furnace? I wish I could ask Daniel, Daniel, were you all alone in the lion's den? I want to talk to Paul and Silas about what happened in that Philippian jail at the midnight hour when they were singing praises. God is an on-time God. He will show up when you need him the most because he has promised us. He'll never leave us, nor forsake us. And I came here this morning to talk about the faithfulness of God. And if there is anybody here today who feels forgotten about, who feels abused and abandoned, if there is anybody who feels cast aside that you don't matter, I stand on the authority of God's word this morning to tell you that you are not a mistake and God does not make junk. You were intricately formed in your mother's womb by the hands of the master. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. God knows the very hairs on your head. He knows the color of your eyes. He knows the shape of your nose. And he gave you and I our own unique set of fingerprints. David said, oh Lord, I wish I had a Bible reader this morning. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in before and behind and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high that I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where will I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens... You are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light about me in night, even in darkness, the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you formed my inward parts. You needed me to gather in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it all too well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. For your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. God loves you so much that nothing will ever happen to you that God cannot use for his glory and for your good. God is faithful. He's faithful with his grace. He's faithful with his presence. But he's also faithful with his provision. God knows how to take care of his people. You and I can't be everywhere with our kids and grandkids all the time. Our nieces and nephews, our family, we can't be with them all the time. That's why we need to pray over them before they leave the house. God is a protector. God is a provider. And when Abraham went upon Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son, God provided another sacrifice. And Abraham called God Jehovah Jireh, which means the God who sees and the God who provides getting too quiet in here this morning. 
when you need a physical touch, you ought to call him Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. When you are into trouble and the unknown is before you, he is Jehovah Shalom, the God who is my peace. Everything I needed, God's hands have provided. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. I've got some strength for today. And I have a bright hope for tomorrow. I've got blessings that are all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. I want to leave you with this point this morning. God's faithful gifts are fresh and they are new every morning. Which means the strength that I needed for yesterday, that's long gone. Today is a brand new day. I used everything up yesterday, and so I need new strength from God for today. And when my eyes opened to this brand new day, my prayer was, God, grant me a reasonable portion. Give me today my daily bread, because I need your strength to get through today, because I don't know what today holds. But you do. And I'm thankful this morning for the faithfulness of God. When you woke up this morning on this side of heaven, you better know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you have found yourself this morning in a battle that you cannot win in your own strength. And we are living in a day that we've never seen before. It's a day we're never going to get back again. And so our hope is in Him. In verse 25 of the opening text, the Lord is good to those who await Him to the person who seeks him. Those who await him, or in other words, those whose hope is in him. And brothers and sisters, I can do a, without a lot of things. I'm, I'm a pretty simple man. But the one thing that I cannot live without is hope. I can get along without a car. I can get along without a bed. I don't need a lot of money. I don't need a lot of people around me, but I cannot survive without hope. When hope is lost, everything is lost. And I hope that there is a brighter day ahead. I hope that the trouble won't last always. I hope that when my weeping, though it might endure for a night, that I have joy coming in the morning. I hope for those things, but without Jesus, hope is only wishful thinking. But with the Lord, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And I wish I had a singer this morning. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness yell, veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. God is faithful. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, toward us. The Lord is my portion. I don't have to be envious of anybody. I don't have to be jealous of where somebody else vacations or what somebody else drives or what somebody else wears because the Lord is my portion which means I'm satisfied. I have everything that I need, I shall not want. Don't give up on the Lord, church, because he has not given up on you. Great is thy faithfulness. Now to him who is able. Aren't you glad that God is able? I tell you, I'm not able to do much. I need a God who is able, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And the church said, amen. Would you stand as we close? Oh, Father, what a great day to be in your house. You are so 
faithful. God, forgive us for the moments in life when we were not faithful to you. Forgive us for the times when we turned around and we turned our back and we said no more. We threw up our hands. Forgive us for the times we got angry, we got frustrated. We want to throw the towel and we want to give up and quit. Forgive us for those wrong attitudes. Forgive us for seeking revenge. Forgive us for the words we should not have said that did not make you proud. Forgive us, God, for making those mistakes, for doing the human thing, Lord, that cast a shadow over your goodness. Forgive us for forgetting about where we came from and where we've been and how far you brought us. Forgive us for taking for advantage and for granted the blessings we have and not being satisfied with the abundance that you have given us. Forgive us for forgetting that all good and perfect things do come above from above, from the master's hand and help us to remember how faithful you are in spite of all that we have done in spite of everything that we deserve your mercy grace and faithfulness reach out again and again and you call us by name 99 are way back there. You left them all in search of the one. And Lord, I have been the one before. And I'm thankful that you care about even the one. And Father, I pray that this church will reflect the attitude and the action of Jesus Christ. That we too would love those that are different from us. Love those who think different than us. Love those who look different than us. Love those who are dressing different than us. God, give us a passion to love those who are even hard to love. Because everybody that we come in contact with is a miracle made in your image that Jesus died for. Let us never forget the mission of this church to preach the word boldly, to go where nobody else will go and love people right where they are. Not so that we would build some earthly church and kingdom, but so that one day the kingdom of God would expand. And when we get there, we will sing the praises of God forever and forever with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Great is your faithfulness toward us. We love you this morning. And as we go, I pray that we would remember that we are more than conquerors and that we are victorious because Jesus has overcome. We bless your name. In Jesus' name I do pray. And the church said, amen. amen. May God bless each and every one of you. Uh, you are dismissed.